Linda was just telling me that um, she's wearing her grandmother's dress. I Isn't am. it amazing? Yes. yes. Literally, her grandmother wore this dress, and she is doing it proud. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm so glad. Yeah. I inherited a couple, so this was the one that I felt was right for tonight. Granny had style. Oh, yeah. She was not playing. <laughs> she was not she playing. She was that girl. <laughs> you weren't playing either. I feel like you were channeling some of her energy. I don't even know. I don't know her, but I know that she Definitely. was fine. Definitely. So. She was very fine. Yeah. yeah. So, um... Dope covers, unexpected. Thank you. How do you choose what covers to do? Um, honestly, I, I feel like I've been doing a lot of the same covers for a while. Mm -hmm. So, No Scrubs was one of the first songs I ever performed in a show. Oh, okay. It was a showcase. It was like an R&B showcase. And I actually Dope. performed with the keys player that I played with, Elijah Fox. Nice. And that's how I met him. Oh. So, and then that's kind of like started things. And yeah. I think we've kind of, you played in enough shows and then you, I like that you can work the crowd into that one, so that's why I chose that one. Yeah, it's super fun. Yeah, with Latch, I just was walking into a cafe one day, and I heard the acoustic version that Sam Smith does, mm. and I was like, I could do that. Yeah. So, then, so then I did, and, and I could. loved it. Yeah, so, it's so beautiful. Yeah. Um, I love what you were saying about gratitude, too, at changing your perspective with gratitude. And I was curious when you're up there saying that, like, if you have any of your own gratitude practices. Oh, yeah. I've started doing a five-minute journal in the morning. Oh, cool. Where it's just, like, what I'm grateful for, mostly just what I'm grateful for, affirmations, mm -hmm. and that's a really big thing. And then also something that I mentioned on stage was looking at scenarios as good and bad, yeah. not good or bad. Mm. Obviously, feeling your feelings, like if you're just in a bad mood, mm -hmm. telling yourself that you're not is not the point. But yeah. just, you know, being able to see the nuance or not lab labeling a day as a bad day because something bad happened. Right. So, the yeah. yin and the yang, everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I got my little hair clip. Oh, she's my literally got yin the yin and the yang. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's super cute. I love that. <laughs> Let's get to some of the uh, questions from the chat. It's the Ask Me Anything questions. And there's mm. a lot of them. Uh, Morcia, Morciel wants to know know when you're coming to Portland, Oregon. Oh my goodness, hopefully soon. Yeah. I don't have any plans yet, but I'm hoping to tour for my first time this year, so probably at the end of this year. This is your first show in LA too, right? Yeah, by yeah. the way, Amazing. This is my first time performing in LA, yeah. Okay, cool, yeah. Dope, yeah. dope. Uh, Danielle Haro asks, when's your next song dropping? Oh, I don't know when my next song is dropping yet, um, <laughs> but also probably in the next couple months. I have a lot of new music that I've written, yeah. um, and then I just think it's like choosing the right partners, mm. that sort of thing. Like the people to perform it with? Oh, or write the it people with? to put it out with, put like out label with, yeah. partners gotcha. or PR and things like that. Yeah. And I think before I was just doing it for the love of it, which is mm. wonderful, but as I've grown in my career, it's got to be a lot more calculated and thoughtful, and I have other people that I'm looking out for, and it's not just like me and my computer and distro kid, you know? Right. So, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, but I'm excited. I'm really excited. I'm yeah. definitely putting out new music this year, so. Yay! And your song, Green Tea Ice Cream, mm -hmm. um, is that your favorite flavor? It is. <laughs> Actually, I'm a little bit of a liar because I recently started to like lychee and red bean as well. Oh, okay. But Expanding tea, the taste. But those exactly. are all kind of like ones that you could get after a nice Japanese meal. Well, actually, they're from Chinatown Ice Cream Factory, oh, okay. which is in the Lower East Side. <laughs> gotcha. So, and it's the best. I mean, there's matcha ice cream has become like a cool thing, but yeah. they were like the OGs. Yeah. You know? I, I feel like they were in an episode of like um, one of those reality shows. They like, must be. Or like a New York thing you yeah know? like the prophet or something i don't know if you yeah watch I, don't I love watch reality it, no. television <laughs> i love reality tv too yeah but. this guy comes in and he helps people fix their businesses mm -hmm. and there's this one new york one and they had like green tea so maybe it was mm. that one i don't know that's a tangent so let's get back <laughs> to the ama questions and if you're talking to me in my ear i can't hear on the side by the way which artist band would you love to tour with hero asks oh my gosh that's such a hard question. Oh, I feel like I draw a total blank. I would love to tour with Lennon Stella. I okay, really love her music, yeah. and I feel like it's like a folkier side of things. Um, I would love to tour with Janae Aiko. Oh, yeah. Wow. I, I like could totally see dope. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. And Moonchild. I would love to tour with Moonchild. Mm. That's like my dream. Nice. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> and um, is there any more a and question? No, there is not anymore. So I want to know, like, the whole NPR Tiny Desk thing, because mm -hmm. I'm always curious when I see that there's like all these artists applying to win. What was that process? I mean, so so if you don't know, she, you were the 2020 NPR Tiny Desk mm -hmm. winner, right? Yeah. What was that process like, applying and then winning? Um, well, I was the, it was the first 
one that was in the pandemic. Oh, so yeah, shit. I actually recorded mine like right before everything shut down in mm-hmm. New York, which was just like lucky timing because nobody knew that that was going to happen. Yeah. Um, so the process for that was just like getting a bunch of my friends together and being like, hey, will you play this one song with me? You know, I have a friend who's a videographer, so he like did that. We got to work at his office because no one was in the office at the time. Mm. Um, so really just kind of like piecing things together and playing to everyone's strengths. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a song that all my friends know also because mm. my friends are my fans and vice versa. What was the song that you did? Oh, Green Tea Ice okay, Cream. Okay, it was that one, yeah. Yeah, so that was, I liked, I chose that one because it had the best background vocals. Mm. And I had my two friends, the Muni sisters, be my background vocalist. So I was like, let me use them, you nice, know, for yeah. the real purpose. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and then winning, there were thousands of submissions. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. There were like a lot of submissions. Did you feel like, oh, I'm just going to try this just because like, you know. Yeah. Did you feel, like, how were you feeling about it when you submitted? Um, my friend had submitted, my friend Nick Hansen submitted his mm-hmm. a year before, and I was a background vocalist in his band, just, mm-hmm. like, in New York. So I submitted with him, and we didn't get noticed at all. Mm-hmm. But not because he's not an incredible artist. It's because of the way it was shot okay. and, like, the quality. So, so that's an important element I learned, of it. Yeah. yeah, I learned from that experience, and then mm-hmm. I actually got to sing background vocals on the Tiny Desk with an artist, Jordan Rockeye. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, Jordan's amazing. Yeah, mm-hmm. and um, <laughs> it's funny because the NPR people were like, we literally didn't even know that was a same person we literally didn't know it was you oh wow because it's not about the background vocals yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's about the artist and then everyone's there to support them yeah so but after that experience i was like well i've played at the desk mm-hmm. i know like how to mic things mm-hmm. this time around i also tried my own with my friend so yeah, yeah so I, that gave you a little bit of experience exactly doing that. yeah dope dope and what who are some of the like musicians that you're inspired by because i could try to guess but i would like to know from oh, you oh gosh i feel like <laughs> i always draw a blank i'm trying to think it's okay i love like i used to love alternative rock growing up so like everyone says paramore now but paramore was like my band like yeah. paramore <laughs> my chemical romance i don't know if everyone says that i, mean, I feel like, like it's making a comeback okay. definitely especially like in gen yeah. z and like yeah. hayley williams has always been on fire yeah but paramore was like my i could sing every song from their catalog my mm-hmm. chemical romance and panic at the disco those were like my childhood things oh yeah love panic at the disco the titles of their songs oh yeah and also their key changes and just <laughs> yeah, like the vocalists yeah, oh, yeah. D- the drama mm-hmm. it was like I, theater. exactly the yeah. drama mm-hmm. and i think i bring a lot of that into my songwriting now that i grew up listening to like salsa and r&b obviously mm. brandy yeah. beyonce destiny's child yeah. the cheetah girls even like the stuff like girls. that whoa throwback yeah yeah totally so let's get to the last question for you our mitsubishi drive your ambition question of the night this question question was voted on by the viewers of Twitch. They picked it. What's the one venue you want to play in 2022? Oh, my god! Any venue. The Hollywood Bowl. Let's manifest it. The Hollywood Bowl. I love that for you. Yes. yes. I'll be back soon. Yeah. <laughs> that is dope. Amazing. Yes. Let's get you into the Hollywood Bowl. Yes. I also, I quickly want to ask you, mm-hmm. I know you're a chess player as yes. well. Yes. Yes. Like, what? Did you yes. start? Okay. Tell me more about that. You started doing that when you were a kid? Or? When I was six. It okay. was a mandatory class in my school. Yeah. And then I played for 13 years. And in that time, I was the worst player on the team and the best player on the team. How did, what? What does that mean? Um, you just, it's kind of like with anything. Also, like kind of like with music, it's yeah. a language. So sometimes, especially for kids, it just clicks. Mm. So for me, one year, it just like clicked and I won all these oh, tournaments gotcha. in a row. So at different times, you were the worst. Yeah. I, when I best. started, I was the worst, but the coaches were like, she has potential. Wow. And my mom was like, okay. If she likes it, she can do it. <laughs> Amazing. Do you still get to play now and again? Not or? in tournaments. I'm yeah. thinking about doing it again, but just like with everything else that I've got going on, I feel preparing like, is a lot. Like musicians chess league or something like oh, that. Oh, musicians be love to play chess. Yeah. Whenever I meet someone who like is especially producers, they'll be yeah. like, will you play chess with me online? And yeah. I have a couple. It feels like a good tour thing to do, like to keep your brain oh, active, definitely. you know? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, Linda Diaz, so thank you so much for being here yes, thank tonight you for, having me. for your debut LA Yes. performance right and we're going to be looking forward to your music that comes out and you, seeing you at the hollywood bowl as well yes <laughs> soon if and anybody knows anybody yeah i mean this is where <laughs> it can happen you just never know who could be watching right now truly you know what i mean so let's get le- <laughs> let's start a petition yes i think that helped get like lavar burton an audition on jeopardy so you never okay. know okay yeah we'll work on it and it helped get betty white to s to host snl so, okay yeah well, Hollywood Bowl, Linda but... Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's introduce the next artist together. What do you think? Okay. Yeah? Tito Ray. Yes. Five, oh, five minutes left? Oh, okay, cool. They told me that it was the last one. So we can chat longer. Hmm? This is live. This is what happens when things are live, <laughs> you know? 
Okay. Cool. So do you mind chatting a little longer? Yeah, that's fine. Because Tito, here's the thing. Tito Ray has like this whole stage production and he has a harpist, mm -hmm. I think. So the harpist may still be warming up or something yes. like that. <laughs> well, Tito and I actually met for the first time today at the soundtrack. Really? Yes. And they happen to be friends with my friend Doris, who oh, is headlining cool. tonight. He's going to be the last oh person. Oh my God, it's a so family affair. Doris is actually the first, uh, my first time in LA was a couple months ago yeah. and I stayed with her Amazing. when I was here. Wait, so how did you and Doris meet? Um, she was managing an artist. So she recently moved from managing oh, yeah, that's into right. stepping into her artist debut, which is like so exciting. That you guys She's are been here together killing on the same it. night. Yeah. yeah. And this was so serendipitous. We didn't know we were going to do this together. So, how, when did you find that out? Just like, like when... literally weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> because I told her, come to my show in LA. And then she was like, they just booked me for the show that you're on, you that's know? That's so cool. So, yeah, but that's, we met because she was managing an artist and, um, like, on a Twitch thing, mm. an Amazon Twitch um, show. Yeah. And that artist or her, I don't know who liked my music. And so they were like, do you want to be on this Twitch? And then, you know, community. We're all Latinos over here. So yeah. it's like. I wonder if that was like a coincidence or. I don't know. I just think it's serendipity. Yeah, it's serendipity yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. And you're from New York. I mean, do, are there folks in your family that are musical as well or artists? Musical, I get. My family's Puerto Rican. Yeah. So I feel like, and also we're Afro Puerto Rican. I feel mm -hmm. like black people, Puerto Rican people, black Puerto Rican people it's are just, just part musical. Of the culture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, nobody, my brother is not a musician by trade, but he like was a great musician as mm -hmm. a kid. And my mom has like not a musical bone in her body. Mm. But she's a writer, so that's where the songwriting comes in. Did you and your brother like make music together or perform we never, at all when we, you were kids? We were four and a half years apart. Okay. So that's kind of a so lot of So he was like years. too cool for you. Kind of, well, I, I was the older one. I was oh, too cool for okay, him. okay, okay. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm the older sister. Yeah. But um, yeah, we were just like in different stages at different times. Yeah. And eventually he didn't want to make music, but we did take lessons together. Mm. He was a much better cellist than I ever could be. So. Wow. Yeah. Were you the older sibling that was like putting him on to music though? Like the cool stuff? No, he was definitely the cooler one, mm. but he thinks I'm the cooler one. So it's nice. We got a nice like dynamic. That's cool. And so what is he up to now? Oh, what is he up to now? Well, he was a freshman in college and then COVID hit. So oh, damn. now That's he's tough. like moving with his friends and starting a business and he went to school for music business. So, I mean, the dream would be that one day I could have him on my team. Yes. That would be perfect. Cause he's like someone that you trust. And that exactly. You're close to. Yeah. Yeah. But for now we're just like bopping around, just he's doing his around. thing. <laughs> <laughs> that is so amazing. And what do you think is like, what do you think is special? The special, okay. If you can think of a few words that describe Lower Manhattan. Mm. What words come to mind? I keep saying the word community, community but I really feel like that. community is a big one. Food, is that a good word? Yeah. Delicious, I think, would Delicious, be the word. Delicious, yes. Um, and I don't know. I guess community and close knit is the same, but mm. I just feel like it's really tight there. Like there's a lot of pride mm. in being from the Lower East Side. Yeah. And do you have any words that come to mind being in Los Angeles? Oh, gosh. I don't know Los Angeles that well anymore. Honestly, <laughs> it, my first time I had a rough go, but this time I'm finding the right people. Community this it, time. It's really all about community. <laughs> I've had the best time this time in L.A. Like, I don't even want to leave. So. Oh, dope. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for hanging around yes. a little longer while Tito Ray gets ready. We yes. really appreciate you Please staying the chat. Please watch Tito. They're incredible. Yes, 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 I'm going to go watch, actually, myself. Okay, dope. In person. So. Thank you, Linda. Yeah.